in next 15 minutes i'll give you an overview on on the current uh, status uh, uh, of secondary cytoreductive surgery in uh, ovarian cancer. So let me just start this presentation with a clinical uh, case, a young lady who underwent primary debulking surgery, which let, uh, resulted in optimal cytoreduction to no gross residual disease and adjuvant platinum-based chemotherapy. And this treatment was completed in March 2018. The histology was high-grade serous cyst adenocarcinoma stage 3B. Uh, nearly 20 months after this initial treatment, she experienced um, relapse in the form of splenic deposit and pelvic mass, although there was no ascites and her performance status was zero. So before I discuss management of this case, let's put things in perspective and I'll uh, you know, uh, show you what is the current evidence uh, uh, on how do we manage such cases. So she essentially is a case of relapsed ovarian cancer. Uh, so uh, ovarian cancer is the third most common cancer in Indian women after breast and cervical cancers. And we know that large majority of women would present with advanced stage disease and initial treatment by a combination of surgery and platinum-based chemotherapy would uh, lead to um, you know, uh, uh, response in nearly 80% cases, but majority of them will experience a recurrence after few months or years. So how do we define a recurrence? Uh, the the uh, definition of recurrence of ovarian uh, cancer is essentially based um, duration or, or platinum-free interval. So, uh, you know, from the last uh, platinum chemotherapy. So platinum-sensitive disease is defined anything uh, a recurrence when it is diagnosed six months or late, later after treatment with platinum-based chemotherapy. If it is less than six months, then it is platinum resistant. And while progression on treatment is called platinum refractory. So these are some of the definitions we need to remember. So this is the typical uh, you know, uh, natural history of ovarian cancer. So, so generally, you know, the first uh, recurrence is uh, after uh, maybe 12 to 16 months, the second recurrence. With every recurrence, there is a shorter uh, interval, uh, disease-free, shortening of disease-free interval. And uh, typically, all these uh, recurrences are amenable to uh, systemic therapy uh, based on the duration of a recurrence. However, the role of surgery, uh, unlike you know what we just learned from Dr. Jayadeep, surgery uh, for initial uh, disease, which is very well defined, either primary or interval debulking surgery. The role of uh, surgery at relapse is highly controversial, and it's uh, you know still continue to be a debatable issue. Uh, uh, in recent past, actually, we got three uh, uh, randomized trials. Uh, reported results uh, on, on this issue. So we have GOG213, desktop 3, and SOC1. So essentially, uh, these are uh, phase 3 randomized trial, and all actually looked at the same question, whether addition of secondary debulking surgery um, uh, in addition to chemotherapy, does it uh, improve uh, uh, survival in patients with platinum-sensitive ovarian cancer? And by design, these trials excluded patients who were platinum resistant because we know the outcome of these patients is uh, really not very good and that it's not worth subjecting them to surgical morbidity and mortality. So uh, platinum resistance is one of the contraindications for secondary cytoreductive surgery. Now, in uh, briefly, I'll uh, you know, uh, describe these three trials. So GOG 2 over 3 was the first one published in uh, 2019. The primary endpoint was overall survival, and it was... Uh, uh, so what this trial showed, and this is the negative trial, in the sense it did not show any benefit of secondary cytoreductive surgery uh, added to uh, chemotherapy alone. So there was no improvement in median overall survival, uh, in patients who underwent surgery. So the OS was 50.6 versus 64.7 months. And even patients who had achieved complete gross uh, uh, resection of the disease, that means R0 status, they also did not benefit from secondary cytoreductive surgery. We just 
uh, learn the importance of optimal cytoreduction at primary surgery. But in this trial, even patients who had optimal uh, to no to no gross residual did not benefit from surgical intervention. The next is a desktop three trial, which is uh, published uh, uh, December 2021. And again, the similar design surgery with chemotherapy versus chemotherapy alone. Uh, the difference here was that uh, for to, to um, in, you know, they used EGO score uh, for selection of patients. And essentially there were three uh, components uh, have to be present to call it EGO score positive. That is ECOG performance status uh, zero, ascites if present should be less than 500 ml and complete dissection at initial debulking surgery. And all these patients had primary debulking surgery. So just a point to remember that results of desktop three may not be applicable to patients who had first surgery as interval debulking surgery, because in this trial, all patients had primary debulking surgery and not an ACT IDS uh, type of protocol. So uh, results of this trial showed, unlike uh, GOG213, that there was a benefit both in progression-free survival to the tune of 4.54 months and overall survival to 7.7 months in patients who had surgery in addition to chemotherapy. And patients where uh, complete mac macroscopic resection was uh, achieved, the survival benefit was to the tune of 15 months. So that's really huge uh, benefit uh, from secondary cytoreductive surgery. The third, third trial is SOC1 study, which is, um, you know, uh, 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 the OS data is not mature, but PFS results have been uh, published. And this, like uh, desktop three, showed uh, a PFS benefit of 5.5 months. And here, the criteria used for selection of patient, like EGO, is, uh, uh, is a more objective criteria that is I model, and it's a little more complicated than. Um, ego criteria. So uh, the question is why, you know, how do we interpret these three trials? We have three trials, uh, but still don't have consensus because of contradictory results of uh, GOG213 and the other two trials. So when we carefully look at these trials, what were the differences between uh, these trials? So uh, uh, the primary endpoint in SOC1 is primary endpoint, PFS and OS, while GOG213 and uh, desktop have OS as primary endpoint. I think one important uh, difference is selection criteria. So both positive trials, SOC1, we actually don't have OS results, so we don't know what will uh, the final result will be. Uh, but both SOC1 and desktop 3 used an objective criteria for selecting patients, while in GOG213, it was rather subjective. And uh, if, you know, surgeon fell, patient would be, uh, uh, you know, optimal cytoreduction would be possible. These patients were included in the trial. So that's one major uh, difference uh, between GOG213 and other two trials. Uh, if we look at the optimal cytoreduction rates, although it was criteria was somewhat subjective, but despite that, so the R0 cytoreduction was achieved in 67% patients in 213, while in 72 and 76% uh, patients in other two trials. So I must say that all trials actually achieved a good amount of uh, uh, R0 um, uh, cytoreduction. And the other difference, I think, is the maintenance uh, bevacizumab, which was used because EOG213 was largely an American study. So it was, and also there was a second randomization between BEV and uh, no BEV. So 84% patients in GOG213 received BEV as opposed to 20% in desktop 3 and 1% in SOC1. And also we have to see that in uh, SOC1, 10% patients received PARP inhibitor. So there could be these, you know, things which led to differences be, uh, in, in survival outcomes uh, between these trials. Also, another point to note that if we look at the uh, experimental arm of all these trials, actually they have almost the same amount of progression-free survival. But what is inferior here is the 
control arm. So SOC1, it is less than 12 months, while in GOG2136, more than 16 months was the chemotherapy alone arm. And in, in desktop three, it is 14 months. So it could be that their control arm was inferior, rather experimental arm uh, behaving better. So the question is, how do we select the patient, you know, in, in a clinic? Because we just have trials. We don't know how, which patient uh, should be uh, should we uh, offer secondary cytoreductive surgery. So I think one uh, point what we have learned is to use some objective criteria to select patients uh, for secondary cytoreductive surgery. So it could be a GO score or I model or MSK also. And there are you know, one can have institutional um, uh, uh, criteria for selecting the patient for uh, or secondary cytoreductive surgery. Uh, what is also important is uh, assessment for complete cytoreducibility of disease because um, there is no OS benefit even in desktop trial if complete cytoreduction is not achieved. So it's important to assess patients carefully. Uh, and select cases only when uh, complete side row reduction seems to be possible. Of course, other factors like performance status, age, comorbidities, uh, we need to uh, take into consideration. Uh, other things which we have already discussed at length is uh, healthcare infrastructure. It's just not surgeon, but uh, your uh, you know overall healthcare, uh, ICU and inter in intervention radiologist and other facilities. And of course, a surgeon who is skilled, experienced, and motivated to perform the surgery. And another factor uh, is, I think, what, what we need to also look into is uh, BRCA status, histologic subtype, tumor grade, et cetera. Because uh, there is a meta-analysis published very recently, and it showed that patients with low grade serous, although it's not in terms of numbers, is huge, but these are the patients maybe they um, may benefit from secondary cytoreductive surgery more than high-grade serous uh, cancers. So this is uh, histologic subtypes, maybe mucinous tumors that uh, tumors which are not very chemosensitive may be the one uh, may benefit from secondary cytoreductive surgery if optimal cytoreduction is possible. The other factor we need to consider is uh, um, uh, BRCA mutation and PARP inhibition. Uh, if uh, PARP inhibitors, because we know that across all trials, actually PARP inhibitors have shown uh, to improve uh, progression-free survival in platinum-sensitive relapse. So this is something we still don't know how, what will be the interaction uh, or what will the role of secondary cytoreductive surgery in the era of PARP inhibitor. And I think SOC3 trial is uh, especially looking at this uh, question. Uh, the next point is if suppose we decide to do HIPEC, uh, to do uh, secondary cytoreductive surgery, what's the role of HIPEC? Again, very, very controversial uh, issue. Uh, currently, there isn't good data to suggest that HIPEC is um, useful in this uh, scenario. Uh, the only, I think, uh, 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 phase two randomized trial uh, MSK uh, has published uh, it actually uh, failed to show any survival benefit from adding HIPEC uh, using carboplatin in patients who underwent uh, optimal cytoreduction uh, at secondary cytoreductive surgery. So currently, I think it is uh, best to say that uh, HIPEC may be in uh, investigational uh, modality uh, at, at the time of secondary cytoreductive surgery. Uh, we really need more data. Uh, to prove its benefit uh, at this surgery. So uh, I think that this I'll come to the end of my presentation. Coming back to the case, um, uh, I started with a lady who is uh, fit and has experienced uh, disease uh, nearly 20 months later uh, after her initial treatment uh, disease, which is limited to splenic deposit in the form of splenic deposit and pelvic mass without ascites, good performance status, How? Uh, what is the treatment option for her? So uh, I think this she's an ideal candidate for uh, secondary cytoreductive surgery. Uh, she fulfills ego criteria. Um, uh, um, 
and that's what what we do to this patient actually we didn't test her in 2018 but we did genetic testing now and she was uh, breca one mut uh, pathogenic mutation positive uh, we did secondary cytoreductive surgery and gave her six cycles of uh, platinum uh, uh, based chemotherapy and followed by maintenance uh, olaparib but as i said we really don't know uh, the role of secondary cytoreductive surgery uh, in in patients who are candidate for parp inhibitor inhibition so these are some of the unanswered questions um, so ultimately it's you know uh, the way we are moving is individualization of the uh, treatment so we have to um, see you know there are multiple factors uh, we need to take into consideration um uh, before embarking upon secondary cytoreductive surgery uh, and it's best to individualize the treatment in every patient and the way forward is i think to have discuss every patient in joint clinic have a multidisciplinary discussion and then uh, uh, decide for the patient's treatment plan thank you very much